What's going on there folks? Good evening. It is the Earthmaster here on the live stream uh, with an update video on this Monday evening, February 7th, 2022, about 7.45 p.m. California time and the latest quake out there, a 5.0 earthquake down here along the Kermadec Trench. We're starting to see a return of some movement down there along the Kermadec Trench area and the Tonga area including a pretty deep earthquake out there around the Fiji Islands area. Let's go ahead and check out some movement out here along the map with the latest earthquake information here from the USGS. Uh, showing some deep earthquake activity out here around the Fiji Islands area with a 4.6. At uh, 400.3 kilometers, there's the activity kicking up here along the Kermadec Trench once again with a little bit of deeper earthquake activity included uh, with a 4.8 at 360 kilometers there into the uh, Kermadec Trench Islands area with a uh, looks like subsequent uh, shallower quake here um, just uh, uh, looks uh, quite a bit later 5.0 at 18.6 uh, kilometers there so watching this area pretty closely we have been seeing a swarm of movement here over the last week or so in this region with a pretty good uptick in earthquake activity here we'll bring that up you can see that movement here specifically right in this area where we're seeing today's earthquake activity so uh got to watch this pretty closely we haven't seen any major main quake so to speak in this area just these uh fives and fours kicking off here um over the last week or so um, up here around papua new guinea area a little bit of movement as well deep earthquake activity uh, near the bismarck sea 4.7 at 132.2 kilometers pretty deep activity in that region of the world Mariana Trench seen some activity as well with a 5.4 uh, towards the southern end and up here towards the north at a 4.5 just south of Japan. Uh, this Taiwan earthquake was from uh, earlier this morning, I believe. A uh, 5.1 striking there at 30.2 kilometers. Up here into the Pacific Northwest or into the um, uh, northwestern part of the Pacific Ring of Fire. There we go. Spit that out right. 4.9 in Russia. Uh, also some activity this area has definitely remained relatively quiet but uh, definitely seen a little bit of uh, activity to the north and to the east here with some movement around uh, the uh, little volcano over here uh, looking at a little swarm of activity <clears throat> see if i can pronounce this volcano correctly uh, let's go ahead and kick this up here and see if i can find it right here it's a uh well, first, let's go ahead and show you guys where we're at here. We'll back out a little bit with this map and the Aleutian Trench here. Of course, it's here. This area, once we zoom in, you can see this area of interest that we're looking at here along this little volcano, kind of pairing it up there with the activity we're seeing on the southwest area or south southern area of this volcano, uh, which is called, uh, let's see if we can get this correctly, uh Semisopochi. Oh man, I just slaughtered that one. Kind of weird because I was just looking it up here just a second ago. Um, Semisopochnoi. Semisopochnoi. There we go. I think I got it right. I'm only going to say it once though. <laughs> anyway, some activity kicking up here on this remote volcano. Um, it's what's it say? The largest young volcanic island in the Western Aleutians. The volcano is dominated by a five-mile diameter caldera <clears throat> that contains a small lake and a number of post-caldera cones and craters. Uh, the age of the caldera is not known with certainty, but it is likely early Holocene area, the or, um, era. The last known eruption of the volcano occurred in 1987. So yeah, a little bit of movement kicking up. It does sit at an orange and watch level at the moment uh, due to the activity <clears throat> kicking up there in the region. There's some updates, of course, uh, with this volcano and some webcam images and whatnot. I'm not going to go over all of that stuff, but uh, definitely kicking up here a little bit in the area of this volcano. I'll go down here to the uh, volcano itself. Watch an orange level. Elevation summit looks like uh, 2,625 feet. Low level eruptive activity continues from the north crater. Uh, seismic uh, seismicity remains elevated and occasional discrete explosions were detected in... Uh, when was this put out here? 
Let me see exactly. Uh, looks like it was put out today. Uh, geophysical data. Weak ash emissions were seen in webcam data. Impossible gas plume was observed in satellite views. Small eruptions producing minor ash deposits, um, usually under 10,000 feet. So, yeah, definitely heightened movement there. Got to watch that uh, volcano pretty closely with the earthquake activity kicking up there. So, uh, it's actually been pretty active over here around the Davidoff volcano and, and areas to the west. So, things may be starting to uh, uh, cook there pretty soon in the uh, volcano regions. Uh, what else we got up here in the uh, Denali area, south of there, 4.1 near Petersville, Alaska, and a little earthquake up here um, a little bit further north within the last hour, 1.5 kicking up uh, just outside of the uh, Den Denali area. And uh, some further movement along the Cook Inlet, seen quite a bit of activity kick up here over the last 24 hours. Of course, major subduction zone, right? Pacific Plate and the North American Plate interaction there, creating that uh, subsequent earthquake activity to the north. Uh, West Coast area seen some activity ramp up as well with uh, some movement out here just off the coast of Eureka, 2.2 off the coast of uh, Petrolia. We have seen a little bit of increase in trimmer activity here. Um, and also, let's go ahead and check that out today. Check out today's trimmer while we're at it. Uh, Looks like about 44 epicenters of tremor along the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, still haven't seen any further movement up north, just mostly confined here down to the south uh, with the activity uh, ringing in here uh, at the southern end of the Cascadia. I've seen a little, at least a back-to-back -back earthquake activity here with a 3.0 and a 2.2 that kicked off over the last 24 hours. Definitely more activity kicking up here, just um, just not showing up there on the map for some reason. Eastern Sierra Nevada, down south to the Ridgecrest area. Still seeing a little bit of movement, but uh, nothing like uh, normal background levels here. Things just kind of eerily calm along the eastern crest of the Sierra. Movement along the Hayward Fault um, was active yesterday, but uh, since it's calmed down, and a little bit of activity working its way down into the creeping section of the Sandres Fault activity, remains very low as well into the Southern California region. Uh, even though there's some activity here, it's just not as uh, active as, as normal on any given day. A little bit of activity here, a 2.1 uh, Camarillo area. And a little movement here outside of uh, uh, the Pasadena area, just to the north of there. A couple small microquakes kicking up around this specific fault here, the Sierra Madre fault zone it looks like, that stretches up here along the crest, or just prior to the crest of the uh, mountain range up there, the San Gabriel Mountains. And also a little bit of activity here on the North American side of the plate boundary, towards the southern end of the San Bernardino Mountains, 1.0, a little microquake activity out there. No major swarming to report, couple small microquakes around the El Centro, and the Brawley area, southern part of the Salton Sea. Uh, otherwise, just a typical day out there in the desert of Southern California. Not a whole lot going on uh, in Nevada, just some microquakes, a little return of movement stretching up into Utah and around the crest of the Rocky Mountains up here, kind of northward, uh, making this turn up towards Montana. You can kind of see that crest, little crest area right here. Uh, it's a well-defined feature we, we look for uh, and, and you can see it pretty much on the last week or so of all magnitudes stretching all the way up into Montana and I'm sure parts of Canada. Uh, but down there across the um, the Garlock Fault Zone just to the north there is kind of where it ends. So uh, just kind of kind of a little pattern that I've been seeing there uh, in the last few months or so. Oklahoma, some activity kicking up uh, outside of Enid. Oklahoma, Enid, right? Beautiful area. Love the Oklahoma region, but uh, what do we got going on out there in the Hennessy area? Go ahead and check this out on the satellite view. And uh, no doubt, so we're out there around the oil fields and the gas fields right next door, right? You can see that uh, activity there. This kind of looks like maybe a farmhouse over here, but uh, definitely some pumping operations and some, uh, well, there's the tur wind turbines up there. But uh, definitely uh, out there in the gas field, oil and gas 
uh, fields out there creating some earthquake activity. Hennessy oil and gas fields. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, New Madrid zone we'll back out here so we can see a little bit. Looks, uh, this one here is from earlier, a little 1.8 earthquake in the New Madrid zone, but other areas to the east look pretty quiet, folks. Not a whole lot going on at the moment in the eastern part of the country. Southwest part of Puerto Rico still swarming up around the northern part as well. Uh, no major activity to report throughout the Car uh, Caribbean area and South America. Uh, Ecuador seen some earthquake activity of 4.1 and down here in Bolivia pretty deep earthquake into the Peru Chile Trench 4.5 at 213.3 kilometers South Sandwich Trench did see a return of some activity here uh, and some of it deeper into the region of the South Sandwich Trench area and into the subduction zone a pair of 5.2s kicking off here over the last 24 hours at the southern end of that region uh, areas to the east, further east here, Himalaya area, uh, 4.0 in the uh, China region. And around the Java Trench, we had a 4.6 Indonesia area. Uh, let's see what we got going on on the big island of Hawaii. A bunch of scattered activity all over the place. Southeast flank pretty active. Kilauea still seeing some movement and activity out there with the... Uh, um, ongoing pause and unpause of the eruptive stage out there in Kilauea. Sits down here. But kind of watching Mauna Loa. I think it's been kicking up here with quite a bit of swarming activity and even over the last 24 hours still seeing some pretty um, elevated earthquake activity. Some of it stretching down there too where we expect magma to start moving uh, around 4 to 5 kilometers kicking up over the last 24 hours. So Kind of a hot spot of uh, activity that we need to watch there. Uh, I was looking at GPS stations there, and they uh, continue to show, uh, no doubt, some uplift out there around the uh, Mauna Loa area. We'll zoom in there to the uh, uh, <clears throat> GPS stations, kind of around this area right here is where we're seeing the swarming. And, of course, uh, looking at this GPS data on the vertical displacement there, since about 2014, seen a pretty sharp rise in the uh, upward movement of the volcano. And that continues to 2022 with a pretty good spike, it looks like, here uh, in the uplift. So i uh, got to watch that uh, area pretty closely. What else we got here? <clears throat> we covered pretty much everything in there. There's not a whole lot going on at Yellowstone. I don't know why I continue to show it, but uh, yeah, there it is. Not a whole lot going on at all in that region. There was some activity stretching out over here in the southern part or the southeastern part of the Yellowstone National Park. Uh, let's see if we can go back to the earthquake uh, map here real quick. In the region of Yellowstone, even the all magnitudes here doesn't really show it, but there's definitely some activity occurring around... Oh, mosquito. Too early for mosquitoes out here. Um around the eastern part of the park it looks like because some of these seismograph stations are picking up some type of earthquake activity around the Parker Peak looks to be the uh, uh, at least somewhat closer station you can see that earthquake activity there occurring and also showing up on some of these other seismograph stations there around the Lake Yellowstone area but uh, kind of hard to pinpoint exactly where this earthquake is striking at and of course the map here not showing anything on the USGS map so just gonna uh, they're not big earthquakes but uh, definitely some activity kicking up there around the region um earthquakes Canada I don't believe we've seen any uh, renewed movement up here in this area um, see if we can get these guys to key up here something kind of slowing down here with their site there we go we save updated it that's kind of cool uh, seeing a little earthquake activity north here around the uh, Minnesota area. It looks like seeing a <clears throat> 2.1. I don't even know if the uh, USGS was reporting that. Were they over the last day? I don't believe they were. I didn't see anything out of the ordinary up there. No, negative. Zip zero. But the Earthquakes Canada map definitely showing some type of activity occurring... Uh, over the last day 
movement up here along the northern part uh, of, <clears throat> or actually into Alaska, it looks like some activity as well. Low grade 2.9, that happened today. Uh, rest of Canada looks pretty quiet. A little bit of movement up here with this red circle into the BC area 2.3. Uh, nothing significant taking place though as listed on that map. And they're kind of a little slow. I'm not for sure what's going on with their little uh, <clears throat> drawings and maps and graphs, but kind of just a little, a couple little issues going on it looks like with it. All right, folks, I'm going to jump off here. Uh, still kind of not 100% normal. Kind of just coming and going with this, with this whatever I have. Uh, sometimes I feel better. Sometimes it's just uh, just weird. It's just a very weird feeling of being sick. I definitely don't like being sick. By the way, the Dinsmore station there that you guys are seeing on the map there around the uh, Petrolia area still shows continued earthquake activity. Been watching that uh, throughout the morning and the day today. That is showing uh, current earthquake activity. And there's definitely some type of uh, swarming going on there at the southern end of the Cascadia um and that's just not uh not being reported there by the usgs for whatever reason but the live data is not lying it's definitely shown some activity kicking up there in the densmore california area which sits uh just south of eureka that's uh, kind of why i like to run these graphs here so we can see live data coming in and uh, we know earthquake activity is occurring there we've been watching uh some movement there on the trimmer map but for sure uh <coughs> just seems like only a handful are being reported uh, when it comes to the uh, notifications there from the USGS. But it is what it is. We'll deal with it and uh, just go from there. All right, guys, have a good day. I'm going to try and uh, conserve my voice a little bit and maybe, uh, I don't know, I might have some hot chocolate or something try and help it out a little bit. Have a good night, folks. Stay safe out there and uh, enjoy your evening. We'll chat you guys tomorrow sometime. Peace out.